The following market update content was created by Ivan Gruel, Chartered Financial Analyst and Chief Investment Officer at Avantax. Hello, my name is Sandeep Varma, President and CEO of ATS Wealth Management. Today we'll provide a market update for April. We'll start with a recap of returns throughout the first quarter, then shift to discussion on banking turmoils, economic impact, and finally take a look at current valuations. Volatility continued in March, which was full of ups and downs for both stocks and bonds. After experiencing a sharp sell-off in the first half of March, the S&P 500 finished the month strong, leaving index higher by 7.5% year-to-date. Meanwhile, the technology-heavy NASDAQ Composite Index recorded its best quarter since 2020, rallying more than 16%. Overseas, the MSCI Acquiex US Index climbed 7% during the quarter, and the MSCI EM Emerging Market Index was higher by 4%. In bonds, the Bloomberg US Aggregate Bond Index is higher by nearly 3% in total return as lower interest rates push bond prices higher. Breaking down the market returns by sector. Markets were led by mega cap tech stocks up more than 21% so far this year. While unsurprisingly, financials lagged with a negative 5.6% for the quarter. In the first quarter of 2023, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and several other regional banks sparked a concern regarding the health of the U.S. banking system. In swift response, the U.S. government stepped in with the FDIC backstopping all depositors. In addition, the Federal Reserve took decisive action to prevent the situation from spreading to other banks, creating a new bank term funding program. In aggregate, the policy response was enough to calm fears of another financial crisis. While these events were significant, we believe these were isolated and company specific, caused by poor management decision and absence of adequate risk control. As this chart shows, bank capitalization overall still looks very healthy and has improved significantly since 2008, with stricter bank regulation and capitalization requirement following the global financial crisis. We do believe, however, that the regional banking crisis will likely have a negative impact for the U.S. economy. Lending conditions have tightened since the second quarter of 2022, and we expect that they will tighten further negatively affecting the growth by reducing capital available for business spending and investment. Entering the second quarter of 2023, financial distress from regional bank turmoil has created new stress for the U.S. economy and increased the risk of recession later this year. Banking system turmoil has underscored the weakness of the economy, facing a rapid rise in interest rate in a very short period of time. Following positive growth for the first quarter of 2023 in the 2% range, the economy is likely to see weak real gross domestic product GDP growth for the remainder of the year, with an increasing chance of recession by the end of this year. Higher inflation and less fiscal stimulus continues to weigh on the consumer spending, with the personal saving rate so far now averaging 4.7%, compared to a long-run average of 8.9%. In addition, businesses may slow hiring and capital spending plans due to increased recession worries. We are likely to see further tightening of bank lending conditions as banks focus on quality of their balance sheet rather than on growth, dragging on overall economic growth. On the brighter side, the economy has proved resilience in light of the central bank's aggressive rate hiking campaign. Inflation is slowing, with headline CPI inflation increasing 6.0%, down from the peak of 9.1% last June. In addition, 
the Fed's preferred measure of inflation, the core PCE index, has been steadily decreasing and now is at 4.6% annualized. As this chart shows, variables tracked by the National Bureau of Economic Research, NBER, such as spending and labor indicators are holding up in the current environment. Recent unemployment rate and job opening figures continues to signal the strength in the labor market and the consumer spending, which accounts for more than two-thirds of U.S. economic activity, increased 0.2% in February. Continuing strength in the labor market paired with a resilient consumer should bode well for the growth going forward and could be enough to keep the economy out of recession in the coming months. Finally, we revisit the slide that shows current valuation and opportunities in the market. While both stocks and bond returns have improved this quarter, the current investment landscape looks attractive. This slide shows 10 major asset classes and their valuations, expressed as Z-scores or relative richness or cheapness to their respective history. The green diamond shows valuation as of the end of 2021, and the circles are current valuations. Asset classes across the board are much cheaper today compared to the end of 2021. For example, fixed income still looks attractive as treasuries, core bonds, and municipal bonds remain cheap to their average valuation levels, along with international stocks. Taking these valuation into consideration as investors position for the remainder of the year and beyond. It's important to include diversified asset allocation that positions toward the opportunities poised to drive long run returns. With that, we come to a close of first quarter of 2023. I wanna thank you for your trust and confidence that you have placed with us. See you next time.